Rick here, taking a real quick break midday. Uh, thought it'd be a good time to drop in on y'all. Um, look, when it comes to black empowerment, despite contributions from some of the greatest black minds to ever exist, uh, the likes of Yosef Ben Yakin and Dr. Uh, John Heinrich Clark, Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. Uh, 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 Dr. Naeem Agbar, uh, Asa Hilliard, and the list goes on of these great minds uh, uh, throughout the last hundred plus years uh, that laid the foundation, Dr. Uh, Claude Anderson that laid the foundation. Some voices that are still alive, Boyce Watkins, um, Umar Johnson, um, you know, some people who have provided a lot of information. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are so many great minds that we can continue to name that um, have contributed so much despite all that. We still have it twisted. We still uh, are moving and operating in ways that are non-conducive to achieving the results that we claim we desire. Uh, when it comes to empowerment, when it comes to true liberation, I'm not top talking about operating in this quasi liberation, this quasi freedom that was sort of shaped for us by our oppressor and handed to us to appease us. I'm talking about a true liberation and power where we are in complete uh, control of what it is we need, what it is we desire, that we are not dependent upon other people to live the best possible lives we are capable of living of because until we get to that point, we are not living in freedom. We will never experience freedom as long as we are looking to our oppressor to provide it. We will never experience freedom as long as the vast majority of our time is spent complaining. We will never um, experience freedom. And this is going to be a hard one for a lot of people because our identity is is as black people being oppressed but by racism. But we will never experience true liberation as long as we give as much power as we do to uh, racism. It's not that it doesn't exist. We have proven, we have written about it, we have done great dissertations, studies, and, and we can elaborate on it in great detail. Many of us have made a living writing about it. But at the end of the day, if we give too much power to racism, we will never overcome it. The greatest force we have within us is an internal uh, mechanism that sets forth an idea and a notion that we have to be self-sufficient, that we have to operate within the scope of our own ability to find solutions to our problems. We can't look outside of ourselves because when we look outside of ourselves, that which we look to becomes the power uh, force, the power broker in our situation until we are the power broker in our situation we are never truly free we are never truly operating in liberated freedom we are simply operating at the scope and the level we have been allowed to operate which is in freedom that's what we have to understand freedom isn't relative freedom is absolute We've been operated, operating on a relative reality compared to what happened to slaves, we are free. Um, to a certain extent, yes, it's true, but that's not freedom. That's simply uh, relative freedom. That's simply operating in a new environment of enslavement that is in mindset better than the previous environment, but no more liberating or free. We are not free until we are... narrative and operate on our own accord and not fear consequences. We are not free until we can sit up and say, we're not doing that. We're doing this and have the ability and the power to do so. As long as we're being led in the direction that they want us to go, we're not free. As long as we've got to turn to them to feed our children, we're not free. As long as we have to turn to them to house our women and children, we're not free. That comes 
uh, that freedom comes at, at, at the point of the sacrifice of being willing to step out and actually do something beyond our comfort zone. It comes from being outside of the spectrum of individualism where we are more concerned about what we have and what we've accomplished and where we live than we are about the suffering and the reality of the, the state of our people. See, we've, we've bought into individualism. We've thrown away the village. We've thrown away the tribe. We've thrown away our collectivism, our power, our unity our community for uh, the bins in the yard that's next to Tom and, and Karen. We, 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 we've thrown it away and we have started to measure ourselves based on a faulty paradigm. We begin to gauge how we've come, how far we've come based off of where we live and not the impact we have on the community around us and the ability to facilitate growth amongst our children, our youth, and our less fortunate. We have bought into an idea that we are free when the truth of the matter is we are as enslaved as we've ever been. We just have uh, much more range in the manner in which we move, but we have no power over how we move and where we ultimately end up. That's sad, but we are going to have to change that. We're gonna to have to move outside of the spectrum and the boundaries of what they declare to be the truth. We're gonna to have to live in our own truth by declaring our own truth and then walking in it despite what the outcome may seem to be. That's the reality. That's what I'm calling us to do. We've got to do a better job. We've got it so twisted. And so many have come before us to lay out the blueprint and we have yet to, to, to lay hold of it or follow it. I'm calling on as many as people that, as many people as will hear this, read this, see this, and actually step up and live in it. That's the call. That's what I'm challenging you to do. On that note, look, I'm gonna get out here. Uh, I got some things I've got to do, but I just had to touch on that. I had to talk about it. Hopefully uh, somebody will get it. You know, maybe one person, two people, who knows? But it has to be gotten, I can tell you that much. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in. I will not be before you long, but what I do need to reinforce and reiterate with uh, great uh, specificity is the fact that if we ever needed your support here at the Odyssey Project, we need it now. Uh, there are so many different battles going on on so many different fronts, but one of the things that I'm immensely pa passionate about and can uh, never successfully overlook or sidestep around is the failure uh, of protecting and covering our children, preparing our children, educating our children, giving our children a fighting chance in this world. There are constant headlines of our children dying uh, at the hands of those who are supposed to protect them, at the hands of law enforcement, or becoming incarcerated uh, because of a failure to be prepared and so many other things that we are going to have to be responsible for. We can no longer be uh, satisfied with sitting idly by and going, oh my God, shaking my head. That's sad. That's a shame. We're going to have to become actively involved in being a part of the change, being a part of empowering our youth. So at this moment, I am calling out and I'm asking you uh, to support the work we do at the Odyssey Project. You will always be able to find a way to do so by looking in the description box at the top of the description box of any video on the Black Voice channel and any other platform where you see videos concerning black issues. You will see how you can support us by either clicking a link or giving directly through the organization's Cash App account. Again, this is a time in which we really need to step forward. So again, I'm asking, step forth and show some love and show some support.